have impact on your health is sponsored by Dennis J. Courtney, MD, director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to An Impact on Your Health. An Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. An Impact on Your Health, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. An Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, it's a uh, Friday, uh, still dark outside, gloomy Friday, uh, but it is a get em up out of town version of the show. Things will brighten up in here, and you can help turn on the lights by anything that may be on your mind. We open them up today. I've got some things on my plate I'll share with you. You can call up and share anything you like uh that you may have with us, or you may ask a question, and if I don't know the answer, my listeners certainly always do. The number to do that today, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Uh, we open them up for you today. If you should uh, have an inclination, get it off your chest, folks. Uh, don't let it sit there and cause you all sorts of uh, pressure problems over the weekend. Now, uh, of course, um, we got up-and-coming shows. The, the calendar for the month of November is shaping up. Uh, on Monday, a uh, guest of ours had, had been here It's probably uh, at least close to a year ago since he was last here. Interesting gentleman with an interesting product all around this thing that we're going to talk a little bit about today, even more so elaborating on what we started on Wednesday. The issue is memory loss. He says... Are you um, suffering from CRS, standing for can't remember stuff? This whole memory loss issue is a problematic one uh, for us all. Fear, very fearful, I think uh, universally so, for every one of us worried about how our future may end up and what's in store for us with respect to our memory issues. Anyway, Mark Underwood, our guest on Monday, talking about his jellyfish calcium binding product called Prevagen, and we'll be having a lengthy discussion with him on that on Monday. Then on Wednesday, in anticipation of an arrival here in Pittsburgh, because he is your featured speaker up at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group on Thursday. I know it's it's second Thursday instead of third, and it'll just screw you all up if you happen to always look at the third Thursday of the month. I'm here to tell you there's nothing going on next Thursday, or rather on the 18th, it's happening on the next Thursday, the 11th, and uh, Charter the Fox will be in town. We're going to have him with us on Wednesday morning. Uh, they say it's no problem. This is a West Coast guest, but they say he's up and about and walking around at 5.15 in the morning anyway, and so he'll be our featured speaker. Um, well, he'll be your featured speaker at the group, but our featured guest on next Wednesday show, Charlie the Fox, coming to town. I've met him before, and he's, he's, he's energy abound and all around him, and uh, he's just a nice guy to be around. Talking about never being sick again. Then the following week, uh, a new guest, because she's just written a new book. I got a copy of it the other day. I've been leaving through it. I think uh, there's some interesting things in here she'd like to share with you. Her name, well, her name is Faye Houston. The name of her newly written book and published book is called Silent Enemy, Environmental Illness and One Woman's Search for a Cure. Uh, environmental Issues, we've been talking a lot about it. Uh, anyway, and lo and behold, here we go with another take on it. We had Rick Hill with us um, on Monday talking about environmental uh, toxins in the air. We're going to find out from Faith Houston how uh, those environmental toxins, whatever form they took, happened to make her life so miserable. And I'm guessing from the title... Uh, she has come up with a cure, and she'll share it with you. Then on uh, Wednesday, uh, the 17th, 
uh, a newly acquired friend of mine. I haven't spoken to him yet. Trying to get him, uh, having, uh, uh, trying to get a discussion going with him before he arrives. Uh, his name is Dr. Gregory Smith. He is an anesthesiologist. So right off the bat, uh, in a very short order, the last couple of months, I keep meeting new friends of mine who are anesthesiologists. He happens to be out in L.A. and he works with something that I work with and have done so for a long time: pain work. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Pain issues, how to deal with them. He has an extra special, um, unique way of dealing with it, something called an, N an, N an NESP program. I'll let him describe it. Uh, anyway, he'll be our guest with us. They tell me he is um, uh, a, uh, an addiction expert. Uh, so many people with chronic pain uh, end up getting down that road of addiction because they utilize narcotic medications to, that's probably one of the few things that they get at least some relief from. You can't really blame them. They're just trying to seek relief. Their doctors are trying to get them out of their waiting rooms. And the combination of those two things, you know, doesn't usually end up too good. So uh, with respect to uh, a new guest, a new friend, and a new approach uh, called NESP, we'll have Dr. Gregory Smith with us on the 17th. And that's pretty much the way the month is shaping up as it is right now. As you well know, we'll be adding to it as time marches on. Speaking of time, by the way, don't forget, this is the weekend that the clocks change. They go back. And that word back, I emphasize it, it's falling back. So you got to set those clocks back on, on Saturday night, one hour earlier, falling back. Um, so they're springing forward so that you can arrive at church without any embarrassments on Sunday morning. Uh, it's so dark uh, out there. I guess we got, used to be the, always the last weekend in October, and I guess because of the Halloween trick-or-treater issue, they pretty much have uh, always allowed the kids to have that ad additional hour of light in the evening to do our trick-or-treating, and I think that's what, uh, well, that's pretty safe and an uh, understandable reason as to why. Uh, in the office here, thermograms this month, we just have gone through a month of elaborating on why thermograms are the better bet to get you uh, to a point where you can have some assurances of breast cancer protections. Uh, certainly uh, better than mammograms and certainly not plagued with any of the ills and the uh, foibles associated with mammography. Thermograms in the office this month, November 12th. If you have, if I'm in your geographic vicinity, and uh, it makes me geographically desirable to get them done here, uh, you can call our office at 724-942-3002, and uh, we'll get you scheduled. Uh, all the girls, the girls are here for the entire day on the 12th. If I'm outside of your geographic comfort zone. Uh, let me give you the number to the girls out there. Three Rivers Thermogram, Three, Three Rivers, uh, Three Rivers Thermography. Their number is 412-548-3612. Once again, that's 412-548-3612. And then they'll tell you where they may be, and they more than likely are very close to you, and wherever you may live, and where you hear this this show from at this particular point. They travel all over the place. Uh, get a hold of them at the office and they'll be able to let you know where something may be geographically desirable to you. Uh, in the news, I see as I go through the blogosphere, the woman considered the world's oldest person dies at 114. Um, that kind of stuff always catches my eye. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, her name, Eugenie Blanchard, uh, a nun who was considered the world's oldest person, died in the French Caribbean island of St. Bart's. Wow, what a nice place. Uh, on Thursday, she was 114. Uh, she, uh, Her friends called her Sweetie, Sweets, rather, because of her kindness. She died at uh, Brun Hospital, where she had lived in the geriatric ward since 1980. Wow. And um, her death leaves now. We have the next oldest person up. Uh, we don't have an age on her, but her name is Eunice G. Sanborn. She's from Jacksonville, Texas, and now she becomes the world's oldest person, according to two organizations that monitor that kind of thing. 
And uh, the rest of the article just goes talking about, uh, and uh, she worked, the, the, these, um, Ms. Mrs. Blanchard, or not Mrs., it's Eugenie Blanchard, she's a nun. Uh, evidently, she worked in the kitchen for a whole bunch of years as a nun, and the story goes on to describe a lot of those activities. Anyway, 114 years old, Eunice, who now takes her spot. I don't have an age on, and maybe that blurb will come out in the very near future. Um, as I'm going through the blogosphere, there are certain people in medicine who um, catch my eye just because they happen to be making the statement. One of those is a gentleman, a gastroenterologist, but an alternatively minded gastroenterologist, which is a unique combination. Uh, you may have heard of him before. His name is Leo Galland. And every time uh, that I see, I know he's associated with um, um, the folks out in Washington uh, who do a bang up job with uh, with bringing alternatively uh, with alternative approaches to, to treatment of many diseases. And whenever there's a GI issue, Leo Galland was usually one of the people always on the panel to make uh, an added uh, uh, contribution to the discussion. Now, maybe a little, just a little out of his realm, but nonetheless, when Leo Galland speaks, a lot of people listen. He says uh, in his article that, um, and this is posted November 3rd, uh, five supplements that could help you ward off the flu. Well, you know, we're going to come out the flu season. I haven't seen the, seen the barrage of um, the feds. I haven't seen the vaccine rush. Uh, if you caught it, let me know because I just haven't seen it. And I'm always looking for what's happening out there. Uh, anyway, we are approaching the flu season. Leo says there's five supplements that could help you ward off the flu. I'll just go down through the list because you know them all, um, but you may not have associated them with ones that are used for uh, prevention of upper respiratory infection and flus and the like, uh, antivirals. The number one in his list, NAC, and acetylcysteine, which is an amino acid and an antioxidant. And uh, it's been around for a long time. I just never had heard it. Uh, used within the context of an antiviral, but as Leo says it's in the number one slot. In the number two slot, one, uh, doesn't surprise me, vitamin D. Vitamin D, the hot vitamin for the year 2010. By the way, what's going to be the hot one for 2011? Uh, it's still yet to be established. Anyway, vitamin D, because of its immune system boosting capabilities, he says, is one of the five main nutrients to help you prevent the flu. In the number three slot, American ginseng. Uh, according to the research, uh, taking an extract of American ginseng during the winter could help decrease the development of colds and other respiratory symptoms. There are studies that back them up when compared to a placebo. Uh, let's see, 200 milligrams twice a day for three months of American ginseng decreased the acquisition of influenza infection by 84%. That's pretty doggone substantial. Numbers four and five are um, minerals. You've heard of them before. Uh, zinc and selenium. Uh, the mineral zinc and selenium have significant effects on immune function. There are studies done, uh, well, one done in France found that seniors who took 20 milligrams of zinc and 100 milligrams of selenium each day had an increase in their antibody response to flu vaccine and were likely to develop a respiratory and were less likely, excuse me, to develop a respiratory infection over a two-year period. So uh, those are the five nutrients that Leo said will more than likely be helpful to you to ward off the flu. I pass them on to you with the best of intention. By the way, if you got uh, something on your mind you think may work as well or should be added to the list, just let me know the number 412-825-6262. We'll do that. Let's take a short break. In the interim, you can dial me up if you have a mind to do so. It is a Friday version of the show. It is what we call a get em up out of town version. You can set the agenda around here, 412-825-6262. We'll be back in a moment.
company's new health plan has a $5,000 deductible. We have to make sure nobody gets sick this year. Remember what those doctor expenses cost for last year's colds and flu? Oh, sorry, sorry, I gotta go, love you. We can do this. We can cut the fast food lunches, soda, that's a lot of sugar. We could all take that evening walk. And hey, I heard a program about fruit, fruit of the spirit. What did they say? One ounce, the equivalent of five servings of fruit with herbs and minerals. We could add some to our breakfast protein shake. Fruit of the Spirit is a unique whole fruit parade. Fruit of the Spirit contains fresh fruits native to the Holy Land and alkalizing minerals from the Dead Sea. With no added sugar, Fruit of the Spirit is a unique product from five years of work from science-based nutritional experts. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, convenient, affordable, and delicious. That's one 800 442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, Give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Heard here in KHV 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. Happens to be a Friday morning version of the show. I call them a get them up out of town version of the show. Always looking forward to the weekend. Hopefully you have some things lined up for your weekend, as I do for mine. Uh, as we get on out of town today, we have opened it up the uh, phone so that you come on in and uh, get anything off your chest if you have a mind to. 412-825-6262 is the number to do just that. Now, on uh, Wednesday, I uh, hope you... Uh, uh, or anticipating that I'll just finish off. I, I, I got caught up looking in the blogs and looking all over uh, the uh, literature that comes across my desk. Uh, and this issue of memory loss, I said, was the, the amount of, of articles and blurbs on the blog and you name it that are devoted to the memory issue. I see a tremendous increase and rise in just the sheer number of people writing about and obviously, people who are reading and listening about this issue are increased too. So um, I kept looking at the advice given by those on the blogosphere, and a pattern emerged. And then, and so I saw the pattern similarly the, uh, the same, no matter who was doing the talking. And then just the other day, came across uh, a uh, article written by David Perlmutter. Now. Uh, I mentioned him the other day. He's well known to me, a personal friend, uh, Pittsburgher, uh, not a Pittsburgher really, but has come to Pittsburgh on a number of occasions. Uh, was one of my in, uh, invited um, guests uh, to a conference that I held here in Pittsburgh. Well, it is now. It's quite a while ago, uh, but nonetheless, he's a neurologist, and his um, main area of practice is uh, working with. Uh, uh, stroke patients, Parkinson's patients down in Naples, Florida. Anyway, turns out David is now writing a book. It's soon to be released because it's, it's called an up-and-coming book. This is posted on November 2nd. Name of the book, Power Up Your Brain. And uh, now David sheds a completely different light on this topic of uh, memory loss and how to prevent it because science says it does trudge forward ultimately has identified something that I mentioned to you on uh, Wednesday. Uh, and an acronym is uh, known as BDNF. stands for Brain-Derived Neurotrophic Factor. This is an amino acid. 
that uh, is programmed by your DNA to form, which is very protective of your memory. The more BDNF you have, as it turns out, and BDNF evidently is a measurable item. I don't know how difficult or how expensive the measurement is right now, but it looks as though that science will be providing us a way to monitor our BDNF status as time marches on and as the ability to measure this becomes easier and the cost lesser. But for now, David, in his book, uh, is purporting that there are four things that you should do to increase your BDNF, each one of these four things in their own way, does so. And so I put this list together with a couple other things, and I think from my perspective, a protocol now emerges for you all to pursue that has quite a bit of science behind it in every tenet of this protocol. Now, the first four pieces of this protocol, I think I'll tr uh, directly attribute to David Perlmutter himself. The number one, and every single list that I ever see has it in there as something that you need to do, and it's always physical exercise. Sometimes it's to say walking. Then the other day I saw one that said walk and walk in nature. So you're getting this stimulation from your environment that you won't do it if you're work, working on a treadmill. But it turns out that the act of the physical activity actually increases the BDNF level in individuals as backed up by an article found in the, American, in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So uh, top on the protocol, and thank you, David Perlmutter, for finally bringing the science that was lacking in all the other. Everyone said exercise. Everyone said walk. It was helpful, but nobody was saying why, and now we know why. It's the increase in this level of BDNF. Once again, brain-derived neurotropic factor. The second item in David's list for how you increase BDNF is caloric restriction. This is the item I was sort of at the other day as the show closed and the bongos went off in the background. Uh, but uh, in January 2009, Proceedings of the National Academy of Science published a study entitled Caloric Restriction Improves Memory in Elderly Humans. And this was a German study that imposed a 30% caloric reduction on the diets of elderly individuals and compared their memory function with a similar age group who basically ate whatever they wanted. At the conclusion of three months of study, those who ate without restriction experienced small but clearly defined decline in memory function, while memory function in the group consuming the calorically reduced diet actually improved their memory function as it was measured and did so in a fairly profound way. So in recognition of the obvious limitations of current pharmaceutical approaches to brain health, the authors concluded the present findings may help develop new prevention and treatment strategies for maintaining cognitive health in the old age. The next, the number three on David's list caught me by surprise. I hadn't seen this before. Well, certainly, it wasn't making the list, the list, the many lists that I did read. And the number three item that increases BDNF is curcumin. Curcumin, which happens to be the main active ingredient in a spice called turmeric, increases BDNF. And it has attracted the interest of neuroscientists around the world. Interestingly, in evaluating villages in India, where turmeric is used in abundance in curried recipes, epidemiological studies have found that Alzheimer's disease is only about 25% as common there as it is here in the U.S. So the diet, where they're using a, um, a, a ingredient that has high quantities of curcumin in it, appears to increase and enhance the, uh, the, the level of BDNF and with startling results. So curcumin now goes on the list when it comes to how do you deal and how do you put the protocol together uh, with respect to having um, the impact on memory loss with the science behind it as opposed to just observation. The last on the item appears on a lot of lists, and that is 
like curcumin, DHA. It enhances gene expression for the production of BDNF. The science now coming in that was absent before says in a recently completed double-blind interventional trial, 485 healthy older individuals, their average age about 70 years of age, with mild memory problems were given a supplement containing DHA from marine algae, or they got a placebo for six months. The lead researcher of the study, his name is Dr. Karen Yurko Morrow, commented, he says, in our study, healthy people with memory complaints who took algal DHA capsules for six months had almost doubled the reduction in errors on tests that measure learning and memory performance versus those who took a placebo. Increased BDNF is cited as the reason why. And so uh, in David Perlmutter's up-and-coming book, he says there are four ways to increase BDNF. First, the fact that there is something called BDNF says science is marching on. Second, there are four known ways as it stands right now to increase BDNF. And I can't wait for the book, and I promise you I'll have David Perlmutter in, as a guest on the show uh, right about the time that book is released, and we'll get his own personal take on all four of these as well as anything else that book may have to deal with. So we'll put David Perlmutter's article aside for the moment. Because I'm confronted with patients who come to me now, and they have memory concerns. And if it isn't they themselves who are coming to me to discuss this matter, they are here to represent a member of their family or a loved one who is having memory issues, and they want to know what to do about it now. I believe a protocol emerges now with science behind it that is certainly something to follow and something I'll be utilizing uh, because I, I think it is a protocol with merit, and it would take these four components of David Perlmutter, the exercise, the caloric restriction, the curcum, curcumin slash turmeric, uh, uh, placement of uh, these items in the diet, and DHA, and I add two other things. And I think this is how pro protocols do emerge. I say Prevagen is also to be included in this protocol because Prevagent, working from a different aspect, prevents the breakdown of uh, brain cells because of this calcium binding protein that appears to be lacking in the elderly, and especially in those who are elderly who are afflicted with memory loss. So I say Prevagent, and we're going to be talking about Prevagent on Monday with the discoverer of the product. I'm going to raise to him these issues of David Perlmutter and see what he thinks about him. I'm guessing he probably knows about the article in the up and coming book. So we'll talk about the inclusion of Prevagen and what the dose should be and the like on Monday when we have him as a guest. The final element of the protocol, I've mentioned it before. I feel stronger about it now than I always have. I always mention it as a component that should be included in any protocol where the um, a patient is trying to gain an advantage with respect to memory loss issues or someone who is afflicted already looking for what to do, I say ECP is the ultimately an ingredient that it's going to be a while before medical science puts that in, in their protocol. Uh, right now, ECP is considered to be used for cardiovascular purposes, but I emphasize the vascular component because in Alzheimer's, it's certainly understood that a buildup of plaque is occurring in brain blood vessels, starving the brain from a blood supply. But that plaque is not your, your traditional cholesterol-laden plaque found in all the other blood vessels throughout the body. Uh-uh, this is a special plaque. And this plaque is amyloid plaque. And that is different. And that plaque can't be alleviated by chelation therapy something that we've used for quite a while on trying to diminish and decrease and absolutely can accomplish that goal and objective by using IV EDTA or even oral EDTA. But EDTA types of chelation does not improve uh, the flow of, of blood to the brain by virtue of diminishing, lessening, and in any way even affecting this uh, amyloid plaque in the brain. So what you have to do 
is you have to put brand spanking new blood vessels in the brain. And the only way I know to do that in appreciable amount, and I mean appreciable, is through the use of ECP. I've talked about it a lot here, external counterpulsation. Uh, I've just seen this benefit so often in patients who are getting the ECP for a cardiovascular purpose. And in those rare cases when actually someone had come to me because of memory issues, and it was always in a relative, a mother or a father, uh, to see how ECP could turn them around. And what we're doing at the time, nothing else says it should be added to a protocol, a six-point protocol. Once again, they are. Get an exercise program going. Decrease calorie intake. Add curcumin slash turmeric to the diet. Uh, DHA in appreciable amounts daily. Prevagen to prevent calcium binding protein loss. And finally, ECP to increase the number of blood vessels in a substantial way in the brain as well as other organs, but in the brain particular, I believe, is a six-point protocol that will do nothing more than add on to, but it's pretty for, uh, well formed in my own mind. And uh, expect that if memory loss issues come up here and you come to see me about them, uh, we will be talking about this six-point protocol to move to uh, as, as it stands today, right now. I think these six points are in play. Okay. Let's take a short break. When we come back, you may, uh, hey, you may have some comments or questions about that protocol. I just unleashed and unraveled the before your very ears. Uh, if you do, 412-825-6262 will be the number to get it off your chest. 412-825-6262. We will be back in a moment. healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones a blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow it seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting-edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health here on this Friday morning version of our show. We call this a get em up out of town version. We always have uh, morsels and bits of information that I bring to you. But, of course, too, if you have anything on your mind, you want to get it off your chest, 412-825-6262 is the number to do just that. That's 412-825-6262. A couple people taking up on my offer. A knock is at the door. Let's let him in the store. Hello and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Go right ahead. Uh, this is Dr. 
Courtney? It is. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Courtney, yes. Uh, you said get something off your chest, and I would like to do that. Oh, get it off uh, your chest, please. Prevagen. Prevagen. Uh, man, he's been on the sh making the circuit several several different shows for quite a while. And uh, you, the last time he was on, you asked him if it was synthetic or organic or something, and it was at the very last bit of the show. Okay. And he skated past it. He never really gave you a great answer. And he said, oh, organic, but it's not organic. A couple other people on a couple other shows have asked him uh, what's in it and is it organic. And uh, he said uh, he, he got testy. He got testy a couple of different times. Mm. And I think Elaine, who calls up a lot, she's pretty familiar with everything. Okay. She asked him, and he was pretty testy with her, I believe, one time, too. I, myself, have taken two bottles of it, three bottles, actually, but the third bottle I doubled up on it, so it was for a three-month supply, and I got I got nothing out of it. You didn't feel it helped you? All I to do was just find my car after I come out of this giant eagle, uh, and I got nothing out of it, and I've talked to other people that I said, go and get Prevagen, Prevagen, and uh, they got nothing out of it. So I'm not ah. sure about this. Well, look, you know what? Very good comment to, to, to Lodge. I always listen to the folks out there who, uh, really, if you've been taking the product and you're looking for effect, on Monday, I'll f the questions about what's in this product as to whether it's natural, organic versus synthetic and chemical, we'll get into it. It's only a fair question to ask. Uh, I won't allow. He will not get tested with me, I'm sure of it. Uh, and. Oh, with you, and uh, I know that. Okay. But watch how he answers the question because, uh, uh, it's, it, you know, it's got fillers, it's got binders, it's not natural, and he's got a lot of money invested in this product and a lot of time. So he's going, you know, he wants to recoup his money just like all these other people do. But uh, as far as, uh, I mean, I, my mother, I've given it to my mother. She's in a nursing home, and she didn't get anything out of it. All right. Let's, let's say I'll pick up this mantra on Monday. I know you'll be listening. Okay, you be listening. Uh, let's uh, ask those probing questions. I'll tell you what, I will say I've read the research, okay, and so no one's saying any product works 100% of the time, but the research I read showed that it was... It always sounds great on yeah. chalkboard, but, uh, uh, you know... It, uh, good, not, well put. It's not, it's not, if it came from, actually came from the uh, ocean and it was organic and it was uh, no mercuries and stuff from the fish, I would also probably understand if it's just another product that's uh, synthetic, but it, maybe it's 10% of works for some people, but it didn't do anything for me. Fair enough. You're absolutely allowed to say what it did for you, and it did not do a thing for you. Let's find out how it affects the just the general number and what is the ingredients are in it. I promise you on Monday I'll get to the bottom of it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. That's you too. Aha! Controversial. <laughs> let's, let's, we'll find out more on Monday. Look, another knock and a couple more knocks on the door. Come on the store. Hello and welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hi, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Um, I want to add a couple of things to your protocol. Ah, go ahead. So I'll offer a couple of suggestions. Um, okay. Number one, it, you know, the, the protocol that you were uh, referencing, I just tuned in right when we were... Ah, okay, uh, so... But you said exercise, um, and I would add to that, um, in the, you know, the Department of not necessarily taking supplements, but in in that same category is sleep, um, regular sleep patterns. Um, you know, some of these people that I deal with or talk to, the seniors, um, do not practice regular sleep the sleeping habits um, and getting up, you know, with the sun and each day and getting to bed at the same time each night and it's a big impact. That would be one um, with the exercise. And um, you mentioned DHA, which uh, I would say that uh, we expand the DHA category to uh, essential fatty acids to three or six times. Um, All right, well put. Mm -hmm. So that the omega, the omega three six nine, um, and then uh, a couple of others is uh, acetyl L carnitine and uh, vincocetine and heparin A. Um, I from numerous articles that I've read, those three uh, supplements in particular have all been documented in, in trials to um, 
improved memory. I think the Vinco testing is actually more circulatory related and has been shown to increase the blood flow in the brain. Um, but the Huperzyme A and the uh, uh, acetyl l carnitine has been shown to um, improve uh, cognition and, and memory. So, well, lymphocytin um, and Huperzyme, these are uh, uh, the um, contributions of the pharmaceutical world. These are drugs. And they are something that uh, I believe is uh, the neurologist finally turned to. I've always looked at the profile of, that, uh, of the results they produce as uh, minuscule. Nonetheless, I've seen them in other protocols, so I'm uh, very familiar with them. I did the, your, your recommendation about sleep and rest. I don't know if you were listening uh, to my uh, show on Wednesday, but one of those lists, and this came from an MD, uh, really highly ranked sleep and or amounts of rest throughout the day is extremely important. Now, I didn't include it in my protocol because at this point, I didn't see any research that indicated increasing BDNF. Do you hear this term BDNF mentioned before? Have you heard it just for the first time today? Yeah, today was the first time. Okay, so, yeah, I think, um, I, think, I think what we're on the precipice of here is Science is going to give us something that we're going to be able to measure. And BDNF, which is measurable, I'm sure very expensive to measure right now, is going to be less expensive and easier to do as time marches on. And we're going to have a way to assess any of those proposed treatments through the use of measuring your BDNF level. So the fact that David Perlmutter, a little well-known and personal friend of mine, but an absolutely stellar neurologist, is now writing about it in a book, we're going to hear, be hearing more and more about BDNF. I promise you when I have David on the show that every one of the things that you just mentioned to me, I'm going to bring up to him with respect to, okay, David, what, what about these, these particular items? How have they performed? I'm sure he's going to have an answer for me. I promise you that it will happen as soon as I find out that book is being released. I'll get David on the show, okay? Okay. Let me, let me ask you one, one, one other one. In the category of sleep is, you know, with... Um, and, you know, after the age of 50, the, the sharp decline in melatonin production in the brain. And so in the category of sleep, you know, if someone's not getting regular good sleep and reaching, you know, a deep sleep, then is no, the things like melatonin and, um, and the amino acid l theanine are those, um, uh, you know, appropriate to supplement with, with those to ensure that you're getting Deep, quality, regular hey. sleep, okay. um, on a regular basis. You've thought the issue out. Re re yeah. You, you know, very good point. You've thought the issue out. I've never seen melatonin on the list. I have seen sleep and, uh, and rest, and so to the uh, effect that melatonin would have to be able to produce that, maybe it, as a natural hormone, might not be a bad idea at all. I promise to raise that issue, too. Keep on listening. I'll make the list as long as I have to, and I'll run it by David Perlmutter when we get him on the show, okay? Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, good good contributions, good things to consider. Other knocks on the door, I think we did have a couple more. Come on to the store. Hello, welcome aboard. What's on your mind? Hello. Ah, lost one, gave up on us. Anybody else out there? Hello, anybody else? All right, uh, maybe not. 412-825-6262 is the number. Come on in and give us a call. Uh, find out what's on your mind. And... Uh, I'll keep putting this list together, and when I bring David Perlmutter on the show, it'll be at the time he launches his book. Many of these items may already be included in the book, because uh, I think there is a value to at least having them enter into the discussion. Right now, we got a new uh, scientific test that allows us to measure something called BDNF, brain-derived uh, neurotrophic factor, and this appears to be where science is heading. We're going to always follow science when we have it to follow. I love objectivity, don't you? I always take subjectivity, and I promise on Monday to have this prevagen discussion blossom into what's in the product. And then the responses of folks and what the percentages of them are, because certainly, um, well, one of our callers absolutely feels strongly about it. Didn't help him, I bet. Okay, um, I'll wait for other knocks on the door. Another thing sort of crossed my mind. I'll bring it up to you. Um, 
I oftentimes get, and uh, I can't tell you how frequently these calls have come to my office, and my uh, office manager comes back and, and asks me uh, this question. She goes, got a caller on the phone, Doc, uh, who's asking me, do you do prolotherapy? And um, when I hear that question, uh, it conjures up in my mind an entire discussion about prolotherapy that I think I probably need to raise with you out there, you who listen to the show uh, and understand uh, that there is something called prolotherapy out there. And uh, really, that you open up a can of worms with that kind of question. When I hear someone's called up and said, I want to know, do you do prolotherapy? Well, there's a short answer, then there's a long answer. The short answer is, you better believe it. Uh, it's something that uh, I think was passed on to me um, initially by a great anesthesiologist, one who you all know. His name is Dr. Donald Corot. Uh, Dr. Corot is no longer with us, but he certainly was a big proponent of prolotherapy in pain problems. Prolotherapy is an approach to treating uh, sort of the complaint of pain. Um, but I think I would throw back what isn't being said. That one short question about do you do prolotherapy really uh, reveals, I believe, a whole bunch of questions to ask that I think I know the answers of. And here it goes something like this. A person who calls and asks as to whether I do prolotherapy in my practice, um, I probably would ask these questions, and I think I know the answer to them. It goes something like this. Um, they would say, uh, well, you do have a pain problem. The person is actually saying uh, these things. I'll put it to you this way. This is a better way of placing it. This is what the patient isn't saying when he asks the question, do you do prolotherapy? And what he's not saying is, number one, I have a pain problem. Number two, I've had that pain problem for quite some time. Number three, I've been everywhere, seen everybody, and done everything, and no matter what I've done, who I've seen, my pain continues on. I can't get any relief from it. I've heard about Prolo, and I'm willing to try it because nothing else has worked, and heck, I'll try anything at this point. Now, I believe the question that comes to my office by someone who's asking, does Dr. Courtney do prolotherapy? I believe all those other statements are applicable uh, because one turns to the end of a long list and says, hey, I don't even really know what prolotherapy is. I just know it's some sort of an injection and I'm willing to try anything. Now, let me fill in some blanks about this issue of prolotherapy because the, the question I ask, because I say, look, come on, I do prolotherapy. Please schedule time to come on in to see me so we can discuss whether or not you deserve to have prolotherapy done or not. And it all comes down to this question of tight versus loose. Because working with chronic pain as I do, um, the, the issue of chronic pain oftentimes can be reduced to that concept. Is the tissue, is the joint, is the area of the body involved tight or is it loose? Now, if it's loose, this would mean that ligaments, tendons, and the like over time have shown wear and tear. And because of that wear and tear, the tissue itself is not holding that joint snug and able to uh, be held in abeyance to the confines of that joint. And over time, certainly tugging on tissue that is too loose can produce and does produce a pain problem. When too loose is the basic reason for the problem, prolotherapy is the treatment, no doubt about it. So one needs to be able to assess, is this joint, is this body part, is this area too loose, in which case prolotherapy should be considered and more than likely should be attempted, or is it too tight? Now, tight is another matter. Musculature that takes a beating and a pounding 
uh, either in one of two ways. Either one major macro event, the best examples of these things are things like car wrecks and uh, falling down steps or falling off ladders, uh, causing a major one-time event will cause musculature to inappropriately tighten and contract. The other way that this can happen is not in the one event way, but in a multitudinous number of events. In fact, repetitive nature over time, over and over again, over the course of many years, can also produce muscle overload that results in a muscle that becomes too tight, range of motions are decreased, and quite honestly, pathologies result that reside within the muscle that have to be treated not with prolotherapy, because the issue here is that things here aren't too loose at all. Quite the contrary. They are extremely tight. And the, and the pathological process, which has to be worked on to loosen that up, does not entail the use of chemicals to cause things to get tighter. So I say, to the answer to the question, do I do prolotherapy? is not the real question that needs to be answered. Yes, I do it, uh, but I have to be certain that there, the issues that require its use point me in the direction of joints and body parts that are too loose, where there's a, another word that's used, uh, by the way, in these patients. It's called joint play. There always is, amount in a, in a, is an amount of joint play in any joint in the body. And a certain degree of joint play is very healthy and actually a good sign. But it's pretty easy to determine whether the joint play in those muscles is in a, a healthy level or whether it's too extreme. And when it's found to be too extreme, this is the type of patient that can benefit from and should be receiving prolotherapy. Now, what is prolotherapy, by the way? Prolotherapy is the use of a sclerosing agent. Uh, better said, an irritating agent that gets injected right down onto the ligament or tendon itself. And because it is an irritant, because it is a sclerosing agent, it irritates the tissue enough so as to inflame that tissue and cause the tissue to contract. And once it contracts, whatever was too loose now becomes adequately tight once again and the pain problem can, can be alleviated. But you really do need to examine. Uh, a telephone call come in, do you do prolotherapy, almost has a patient making the decision that, oh boy, prolotherapy is for me, because nothing else works. Uh, it's got, it, it has to be. This, this has to be the final thing for me to use so that I can get my pain problem resolved. And I can certainly appreciate uh, the perspective of a patient who said they have tried everything and nothing has worked. Well, what I usually find is, yes, they've tried the, uh, well, they usually have met up with the big three, the big three uh, conventional medical doctors that I think uh, would be a standard place that I would want everybody to have already visited, and that would either be orthopedic surgery, neurology, or um, orthopedic surgery, neurology, or neurosurgery. And uh, these three specialties usually do a pretty good job of working up a patient through the use of sophisticated study. Those sophisticated studies usually come in the form of MRI, CT, EMG. And with all those studies in, they try to determine if there's a lesion that could explain why this person has a pain problem. If there happens to be a lesion, these Three experts are very good at dealing with that lesion, and really, uh, in my case, not being a surgeon, um, this is certainly appropriate. I often want to see that those kinds of consults have been made. And the patients who call up and ask about whether we do prolotherapy or not, it's more than likely that uh, they've already seen the big three, one or many members of the big three. They've had so many x-ray procedures by this point I say these patients glow in the dark, if you know what I mean, because they haven't had a CAT scan, they haven't had AMRI, they've had a multitude of them, and literally, uh, and in a cynical way, actually do glow in the dark. 
For now, at this point, those x-rays are no longer needed. We don't require them anymore. Once you've been able to rule out the fact that no lesions exist, then we re are down, in my um, opinion, to those two concepts of tight versus loose. If things are too tight, there is a direction to go to make those muscles and musculature become much more loose. And in the process, the pathology can be reversed. And if it's too loose, the use of prolotherapy and these sclerosing agents will actually be able to cause tendons and ligaments to re-tighten, um, to, to, to actually shorten in length, and that joint can come back, can come back to an appropriate level of joint play that heretofore had not existed. And in either case, the pain problem can be dealt with. Hope you enjoy allowing me to share that with you. Uh, the phone calls come in often of asking about prolotherapy. If the, the point is, if you have a pain problem, come on in and let me see you. We can easily determine if you are too tight or you are too loose and whether prolotherapy is the appropriate recommendation to pursue. Hey, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget on Monday, Mark Underwood will be here. We will be talking about Trevichin. All you who are listening today, stay tuned. And uh, I promise to ask those big questions and we will get answers. And uh, nobody will get fluty or uffity or anything like that. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health is sponsored by Dennis J. Courtney, MD, director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3000.